Hey guys, what is going on? It is Colin from CSP Tech here, and I've been looking for a small lightweight laptop that I can bring with me when I want to write, consume media, or when I just don't want to be stuck in front of a desktop for hours. And the idea of a Chromebook has always interested me, but I never found one that uh, compelled me enough to pull the trigger and buy one until now. Introducing the 13-inch C300 Chromebook from ASUS. Knowing that Chromebooks aren't all that powerful, I did quite a bit of research before buying just to make sure I was going to get one that held up. Naming specs really quick, the model I have has an Intel Baytrail dual core Celeron N2830 processor running at 2.16GHz, 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a 16 gig SSD, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, and a 13.3 inch matte TN panel with a PPI of just under 118. For power and multitasking, there may have been better options out there, such as the HP Chromebook 14, which has a Tegra K1 processor and 4 gigs of RAM, but in Canada, those retail for about $400, and the fact that I could get a used 13-inch MacBook Pro for around that price made me think twice about spending that much money on essentially a glorified web browser. So I opted for a lower price model, but I was looking for a few key features. First, it had to have a decent screen, which you guys might find funny that I picked a C300 because it probably has one of the worst screens in the few Chromebooks that I looked at, but it does have a few trade-offs, which is why I still picked it. It is a 13.3 inch matte TN panel with a resolution of 1366 by 768, although you can change it to 1536 by 864 right out of the box, but it ends up just looking slightly off as it is not the screen's true resolution. Going for my IPS monitors on my desktop and the IPS display on my phone, which both share the same resolution, 1080p, TN was a little bit difficult to get used to. Although the side to side viewing angles aren't great, it's definitely usable, and the screen is evenly lit until about 45 degrees, then it drops some brightness for the rest, but it doesn't really wash out. Where the screen does lose points, however, is in the up and down at angles. Anything other than looking straight on is pretty unbearable, and I find myself adjusting the screen quite often. Straight on gives you the brightest screen, but I actually find having it tilted slightly away from me is the best position. Not too bright, and the colors kind of have a dead zone where they don't change, so you have some room to play with. Starting with the worst part of this laptop was probably pretty good in this case, because the rest of it is pretty solid. For good things, first off, the design and build quality are top. With a sleek black brush metal look to it, it looks awesome, and the brushed look is on the top of the laptop, around the keyboard, but around the screen and underneath the laptop is just black matte plastic, with the sides being a glossy black. The laptop is surrounded in plastic, but it holds up fairly well to stress. There is minimal flex on the keyboard and the screen, but if there's one thing I do not like about this design is that it is a major fingerprint magnet. Within 30 minutes of having the laptop, it was so covered in fingerprints that even trying to remove them only made it worse. After a few days of using it and handling it though, the fingerprints just morphed together and now smudging is less apparent, so at least there's that. One of the biggest things I was looking for in this laptop is a good keyboard and trackpad. When you're paying $200 for a laptop, I can't say that my expectations were all that high, but I did my research and all the reviews said that the C300's trackpad and keyboard were the best of the bunch, and I have to agree. Some of the other Chromebooks I've tried have small, no travel keyboards and unresponsive trackpads, but this one is nice. The keys have a decent travel time and don't feel mushy, which is good, and the trackpad responds pretty well. It also has multi-touch controls, which is nice, and they all run relatively smoothly. Next up on the list is the form factor. Now this is somewhat involved with the size of the keyboard because I hate, absolutely hate small laptops. Those 10 or 11 inch laptops are so inconvenient for me, so I knew that 13 or 14 inches would be perfect for what I needed. The C300 strikes a good balance between weight, thickness, and size, and the C300 weighs in at just under three pounds and just under an inch thick. It is super portable, which is what I was going for, and I can throw it in my bag and forget I'm carrying it. Because of the slightly bigger size, I can rest it on my legs when writing, whereas the 10 or 11 inch Chromebooks would just be falling constantly. On each side of the trackpad is a nice space where I can naturally rest my palms when typing, which gives me full access to the keyboard. A good array of ports is always welcome on laptops, and this one has just enough to make it nearly perfect. On the left side, we have the AC power plug, an HDMI 1.4 port, and a USB 3.0 port, as well as an SD card reader and a headphone slash microphone combo jack. On the right side, we have a single USB 2.0 and a Kensington lock. The only thing that would have made it perfect is maybe another USB 3.0 port, but that's just my preference. When talking about laptops, one of the big arguments is always battery life, and since this is such a low power laptop, they managed to squeeze quite a bit of life out of this battery. So the C300 is rocking a 3 cell 48 watt hour battery, and ASUS says you can get about 10 hours on a charge, and yeah, I have to agree, this thing is amazing on battery. On a light usage day when I'm not connected to the internet, I'll get about 12 or 13 hours of use, but on an average day with internet, I'm looking at anywhere between 8 and 11 hours of use, which is amazing. I've never had a laptop that warns me about having 15% battery left with an estimated time of over an hour before it dies. One of the major things that could be improved on this laptop is the speakers. They are stereo speakers, and they are loud, but only when placed on a solid surface. They are designed to be tucked away under the keyboard, of which they do a good job, but I would have much rather have them be under the keyboard facing up or above the keyboard itself. 
Don't get me wrong, they're good enough to listen to music on your own, but if you're blasting them while you're doing something else, they tend to distort at high volumes. So I'm going to show you guys a quick audio sample here, but keep in mind that I was shooting outside in a windy day with the built-in mics on my camera. Enjoy. Those are the only few things I really didn't like about the laptop though, the screen and the speakers. I was expecting offline use to be a lot worse, but whenever I needed it offline I just hotspotted for my phone and had internet that way. If the few things you didn't like about this laptop are deal breakers for you, go check out the Toshiba Chromebook 2 as it fixes essentially all these problems. So all in all, this is a great laptop and Asus did a lot of things right with this one. If you guys need power and multitasking, I'll probably recommend another one, but for everything else, this is probably the best bang for the buck Chromebook you can get right now. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.